Hello, dear children. Welcome to new English lesson. The topic of today's lesson is a science museum. My name is Lidia Sharavanya. I will do this lesson with you and I hope you will enjoy it. In this lesson, you will read texts about scientists and listen to some texts about scientific discoveries up to present moment. I hope that by the end of the lesson, you will be able to understand written texts about scientists and audio texts about their discoveries. And I hope that you will do your homework successfully, the homework in which you will write and talk about science and scientific discoveries. For the lesson, you need the usual, a notebook and a pencil, device with internet connection, and the QR scanner. It will be useful to go through the video lesson for grade 8 called Do You Like Science? and go into the topic more thoroughly. Keep in mind that you can pause, play or rewind the lesson whenever you feel you need to. And let's start with a guessing game. You will see some ideas in four columns. They will come one by one. While thinking about them, try to guess which science they are related to. Are you ready? The first idea is elements. The second one processes. Think about it. Next is reaction. And the fourth idea is atoms. Can you guess which science they refer to? chemistry very well. Let's go on. Sky, observe. Stars, telescope. Which science are we talking about? Astronomy, yes. Let's go on. Rules, sum, fractions, Numbers. I bet you know that it is all about mathematics. And the last one. Moving. Space and time. Force. Energy. Which science do they refer to? Physics. Very well. And welcome to a science museum, a place where you can find the answers to many of your difficult questions. Here are the people who are there for your complete experience. A museum technician maintains and prepares objects for exhibition. A curator designs exhibitions, chooses and presents the objects, moves them from one place to another. An archivist selects and arranges museum materials and takes care of museum's documents. A conservator works on exhibits, protects them and takes care of them. You can take a look at the words on the screen now and try to match them to the corresponding explanations. Pause the video while thinking about it. Let's see if you matched right. A conservator works on exhibits, takes care of them and repairs them if necessary. An archivist selects and arranges museum materials and takes care of museum's documents. A curator designs exhibitions, chooses and presents the objects, moves them from one place to another and a museum technician can build or repair things and helps prepare them for the exhibition. I hope that you did everything right. Your next task is to check how good you are at understanding some scientific terms. Pause the video to read the text and insert the words into it. There is no need to write it down, 
Just try to complete the sentences with correct terms. Let's pause the video now. And let's see how well you have done it. When you heat and cool a liquid because you want to separate things in it, you perform distillation. A pleasant, sweet smell is also called fragrance. Essential oils are made out of plants, usually flowers, and have specific fragrance. When you extract things, it means that you use a special method to take them out of something else. The process of extracting essential oils from flowers using fat is called enfleurage. I hope that you did everything right. You are at the first stop in the museum now. The curator is showing some exhibits. Can you recognize the process photographed on the left? What does it have in common with the photo on the right? Let's listen to her. What you see on the left is the process of distillation. Distillation is one of the methods used to extract fragrances from plants such as orange blossoms, lilies, or roses. Distilled products are known as essential oils. Do you know when people first started producing essential oils? Let's find out. We are going back to 1200 BC. This exhibit comes from Mesopotamia. It is a tablet on which you can read about Tebuti Belatekalim. Belatekalim means female palace overseer, and Tebuti is a name. Do you know what an overseer means? Overseer is a person who makes sure that everybody does their business properly. The word in Croatian is nadglednik. Have you heard of Tebuti? Probably not. She was the first known chemist who lived in 1200 before Christ in Iraq. She was popular at court because she worked in the court perfumery creating fragrances for medicinal and religious purposes. Tebuti had a detailed knowledge of chemistry, especially solvents and processes like distillation, extraction and cold enfleurage. If you are interested in the process of enfleurage, check the link below the picture. Bitly ate enfleurage. Let's look at this now. What do the images represent? What can you see in the video? These are images of a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse happens when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. This only happens when the sun and the moon are exactly or very closely aligned with the Earth. When the moon is totally eclipsed, it turns a reddish color and that's called a blood moon. It can last up to two hours and it can be seen from anywhere from the night side of the world. Do you know who was one of the first people who could understand how the moon and the sun move? Let's find out. We are going to the 18th century now. You are going to read about another scientist now. Copy the fact file from the screen into your notebooks and complete it while reading. Pause the video to do so. You can pause the video again now to read the text and do your task. After you've completed the fact file, play the video again and check what you have written. Now let's look at the fact file with the pieces of information that were missing. Name, Wang Zhenyi. Occupation, an astronomer, a mathematician, a poet. Time, 18th century. Place, China. Contribution, describing the movements of the sun, the moon and planets. Explaining solar and lunar eclipses. 
easier methods for multiplication and division. If you would like to know a bit more about this amazing woman, scan the QR code on the screen or type the link into your browser. The link is bit.ly Wang Zhenyi. Have fun! Now look at this unusual thing. Have you heard of the analytical engine? Are you familiar with the names of Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace? Let's listen. We're very proud to show you this trial model of a part of the analytical engine built by Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace. This was a mechanical, general purpose computer similar to computers designed in the electronic era. Unfortunately, Babbage and Lovelace were not able to complete the construction of this engine because they didn't have enough engineering and financial support. Now, Charles Babbage is a famous name, but what about Ada Lovelace? We are in the 19th century now. Before reading about Ada Lovelace, try to guess some things from her life using the keywords on the screen. You probably do not know a lot about her, but you still might get something right. Your task is to look at the keywords. Use each in a sentence to guess about Ada Lovelace. The keywords are computer algorithm, education, invent, programmer, Calculate. Pause the video to write the sentences into your notebooks. When you have finished, play the video again. Read the text about Ada and compare it with your sentences from the previous task. Tick those you guessed well. You can pause the video for this. And let's go on. Do the images on the screen look familiar to you? What does the device on your left do? What is it used for? Have you ever seen it? Let's listen. What you see here is an X-ray generator, a device that produces X-rays. It's commonly used in medicine and radiographers need it to make X-ray images of internal structures of bones. It's also used by security officers at airports or schools when they need to scan bags for possible weapons or even bombs. In the 1940s, shoe salesmen used to use shoe-fitting fluoroscopes to sell footwear. They were able to scan the foot bone structure. However, after they discovered it had harmful effects, it was banned for this purpose. Now, how did it all begin? We are moving through time again. You have probably heard of Marie Curie. Look at the sentences on the screen and decide whether they are true or false. Copy only numbers from 1 to 6 into your notebooks. Write T or F next to the number of the statement. Pause the video for this activity. Please pause the video again so that you can read the text and check how much you knew about Marie Curie before reading it. She was really an extraordinary person, wasn't she? Let's see together. It is true that Marie Curie discovered radioactivity, so statement number one is true. Statement number two is false. A mobile X-ray unit was used in World War II. Statements 3 and 4 are both true. Marie Curie was married and her husband Pierre Curie was a scientist. Polonium and radium are radioactive elements, so statement number 5 is true. And fortunately, statement number 6 is false. Marie Curie won two Nobel Prizes. Let's move on. We are obviously going to talk about space next. What is there between stars and planets? Why don't they drift away to some random direction? Let's hear. 
The thing that keeps galaxies from flying apart is dark matter. Without dark matter, galaxies would not be formed as we know them to exist, and they wouldn't move in the same way. Now, it's really difficult to observe them directly, and that's why some astrophysicists actually doubt their existence, because they need more proof. So, is there any evidence at all that they actually exist? Let's check it out. Welcome to the 20th century. You will pause the video once more for this activity. Look at the fact file about Vera Rubin. Write a text about her using the information from the fact file. Take as much time as you need. Read the text about Vera on your screens. Is it similar to yours? I believe it is. It is time to see how well you understand the new words from this lesson. Scan the QR code or type the link bit.ly SCI Museum into your browser. Have fun and do well. Did you know? The Nobel Prize has been awarded since 1901 for the greatest benefit to humankind. Around 960 individuals and organizations from more than 70 countries have received the prize. Less than 6% of the recipients are women. It is time for your homework. Choose one of the scientists from the lesson. Make a poster about her. You can use any tool you feel comfortable with. Include the following. Personal information, like name, time, place, her contribution, and some interesting facts about her. Present your poster to your teacher. While you are presenting, use the following sentences. I've learned about, I've changed my opinion about, I am more aware that, I was surprised with the fact that, I feel, etc. If your mind is tickled by science, you can visit the page that the Science Museum Group has prepared for their visitors. Who knows? Maybe a great scientist in you is about to rise and shine. You can scan the QR code on the screen or type Bitly Play Science into your browsers. Have fun! I hope that you have reached the goals I set for you with this lesson and that you can confidently say, I can understand texts about scientific discoveries. I can understand texts about scientists. I can make a poster about a scientist and a scientific discovery. I can talk about a scientist and a scientific discovery. Here is the list of sources and helpers that I am thankful for. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed preparing it. Goodbye until the next time.